Hey, what's up, everybody? It's time for another episode of Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio. And here we are. It's episode 113. Today, we're going to talk about training in different environments. I'm Whistle Kick's founder, but I'm better known as your host, Jeremy Lesniak. Whistle Kick, if you're not sure yet or haven't heard or maybe you're new to the podcast, what do we do? We make the world's best sparring gear, as well as some really great apparel and accessories for practitioners and fans of traditional martial arts. I'd like to welcome the new listeners and thank everyone that's come back again. We really appreciate your support. All of our past podcast episodes, show notes, and a whole lot more are available at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. From that site, you can sign up for our newsletter, and I really suggest you do, because we offer exclusive content to subscribers, discounts, and it's the only place to find out about upcoming guests for the show. Now, as the weather starts cooling off, you might be in the market for something warmer, Whether you're headed to training, the gym, or just something comfortable to wear around the house, our sweatpants are it. Seriously, people love these things. We have people coming back buying multiple pairs because they're the best sweatpants they've ever owned. I have a few pairs myself, and through the winter months, even the fall and spring on those cool mornings, they're pretty much all I wear on my legs. Well, that and my training uniforms. But let's talk about training, specifically where you train. Now, if you're like me, like most martial artists, the vast majority of your training is at your dojo, your dojang, academy, training hall, or whatever you call it at your school. You might have mats or a hardwood floor, but the surface probably doesn't change. The lighting is probably the same, unless maybe a light bulb goes out. And if you're like most schools, you always face the same direction. For some martial artists, this routine can pose a problem. And it really comes down to two things, engagement and practicality. Now, by engagement, I mean that your surroundings have a lot to do with the energy you invest in your training. Different people, different locations, and different sights, sounds, and smells seem to wake people up and inspire them to train harder. By practicality, I mean that we adapt to our surroundings and aren't quite as adept at taking action in strange environments. This doesn't just go for martial arts, but for anything. In other words, it's not a martial arts problem. It's a human being problem. So let's talk about the engagement challenge first. If you've been listening to the show, you know that I'm an advocate, a strong advocate for training with different instructors, attending seminars, and otherwise varying your martial arts education. Of course, that will require you to go to different places and you'll learn differently because of those environments. But what about the rest of the time? One of the most interesting things I ever saw in a martial arts class was when an instructor had a kid's class turn 90 degrees and face a different wall. It was like a completely different group of children. They were suddenly attentive, powerful, and really invested in the class. About 10 minutes later, as the energy level waned, the instructor did it again. Sure, there was likely some benefit from the small break the kids had while they changed positions, but I have no doubt that looking at a different wall was enough to wake up the children's senses. In fact, I've done this myself when I teach children and even adults, if they seem to be fading. It's incredible. There are other ways to up the engagement in your regular old training facility. Changing the lighting can be huge. You could turn off a couple lights or maybe turn on ones that you don't normally. Replace a bulb with a colored bulb. It can completely change the space. You could draw the shades. You could give notice to the parents and kick them out for a class, not allow visitors. You could even put sunglasses on everyone. These little things, they may seem trivial, they may seem silly, but they can have immense impact. If a child is used to training when their parents are around and they need to use their martial arts to defend themselves and their parents aren't around, is that going to have an impact? For some children, probably not. For others, it may, because they're used to performing while their parents are watching them. And as instructors, as martial artists, we want to look at diversifying our training and if we're responsible for the training of others, for those folks as well. Anything that alters the sensory input will prompt a response. And the longer someone has been training, chances are the stronger the response. Let's talk about that challenge for the physical space now. You can change it all you want, these sensory changes that we just talked about. But at some point, you have to consider that it's still really the same space. There's benefit to training outside that space 
as we've discussed on other episodes and even just hinted at earlier today. Where, though, can and should you train? Now, if you want to freak out a younger or newer student, take them to a crowded park and ask them to do a form. Chances are they'll panic. They may even freak out. Will they panic if they're attacked in that same place and they have to defend themselves? Chances are they'll be a lot more willing to use their skills, but that's proof of the anxiety that comes up for some people while others are watching them. And that's something that we're not really going to get to address in a typical training space. Training outside in different weather conditions with strangers watching, that's a whole new dynamic to your martial arts training. If you've ever been part of a demonstration, you've probably witnessed this, whether you realize it or not. People act differently in different environments. Some people seem to draw strength from training in a wooded environment. Others do better during a beach training. My challenge to you is to go out and try training in different environments. In fact, I'm going to give you a checklist right now, and I'm going to urge you to try checking all of these off in the next 30 days. Even if you're only training for 15 minutes, try practicing in your car, in a public park, in the woods, at the beach or a pool, in front of your house, in your bedroom, and on top of something tall, like maybe a, a high building. Try and do at least one of those at night, one during a rainstorm, one while it's hot, and another while it's cold. Be present during your training and see what you observe. Check in with yourself and identify those combinations, those physical spaces, those weather conditions, those temperatures that you find challenging. There are lessons to be learned from each of these, and all of them make you a better martial artist. The elements and locations that you find most challenging are the ones that will yield the greatest benefit if your practice embraces them. Now, I'd love to see photos of our listeners training outside, training in the rain, or in some other non-conventional places. Go ahead. If you don't want those to be public, email them to me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. Or if you're willing to share them with everyone, post them over on the show notes, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. This is episode 113. Or tag us in social media. We're pretty much everywhere with the username Whistlekick. Do you have a favorite location that you train? outside of your school? Let us know what it is. Why do you train there? Why do you like it? What benefit are you getting? If you have other comments, let us know those too. Like I said, you can comment at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or any of the social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube. Now, if you want to be a guest on the show or maybe you have an idea for a show topic, go ahead, fill out the form on the website, get that over to us. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter so you can stay up on everything we do. And you can learn more about our products at whistlekick.com. Like are really comfy, cozy sweatpants. You can check out our awesome sparring gear there at whistlekick.com or on Amazon. Now that's all for today. So until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.